Hi guys, my name is Ben from Ben's Guide and in the video today I'm going to be sharing with you why I think the Canon EOS RP is probably the best budget full frame mirrorless camera that money can buy right now. You know, in recent weeks, there has been so much hype about the R5 and the R6 that people have kind of forgot about the RP and the USR. And it's a shame because you've got to remember there's a lot of photographers like some of you guys watching this video out there or video shooters which are not interested in all these extra specs. And they don't want to part with two and a half thousand pound or four thousand pound. They're interested in some kind of access into the full frame mirrorless world, which is not going to cost them a lot of money. This is where the RP really comes into its own because it's like a thousand dollars or a thousand pound right now, which is really quite cheap for what it is. But you know what, in this video, I'm not going to just talk about the good of this camera because there are some flaws. There's a lot of good and there's a bit of bad. So I'm going to openly share an honest kind of review with you of why I think this camera is probably the best budget mirrorless camera that you can buy right now that's full frame um, but still there are some compromises so let's talk about photography to start with shall we now listen if you're a video shooter and you're not really interested in photography the good news is that on all my latest videos now I add timestamps so you can just skip through to the part of the video you want to watch and you can just you know avoid watching this because you're not interested in it so this camera comes with a 26 megapixel full frame sensor now in my experience shooting photography with this camera which i've been doing so for about six months now the sensor the resolution gives you some really nice sharp and detailed photos but i don't just want you to take my word for this i want you to take a look and see these images for yourself so you can see this list of images here which i've captured with the eos rp and the rf glass now this is incredible lenses which i'm going to share with you in a little bit you can see from these images right here that the quality is there i mean it really is good for a thousand pound camera you get to take some really good photos with it now i think what i'm going to do actually is when i finish this video i'm going to provide you guys with the raw photos so if you want to spend a little bit of time editing these photos so you can see for yourself then you can do so and you can edit these photos to your heart's content so what i'll do is i'll leave a link in the description you can click on there and you can get free access to these photos and edit them as much as you want also there will be links to everything you see in this video including the rp camera itself now i honestly feel a bit like a broken record when i talk about canon color and the color science because it's just i've said it so many times but it's worth mentioning to people which haven't heard it the color science on canon cameras is really really impressive it gives you really nice natural colors and that's important for you know photographers and also video shooters so it's something worth me quickly noting in this video now one of the best aspects about this camera for no doubt is the autofocus dual pixel autofocus is really really good it's fast and reliable which are the two things that you want from autofocus you've also got eye autofocus built in the canon eos rp not just that it's brilliant eye autofocus you can shoot 15 18 meters and you can lock onto the subject's eye and it's reliable giving you a high hit rate when it comes to sharp photos. So if you're interested in a camera which has got good autofocus, the RP is definitely worth checking out. Another great feature about the RP is that you get access to the RF lenses, the RF glass. The best lenses that you can buy right now is RF lenses. I've got two myself, the 24 through to 105 millimeter, which I'm shooting on now. It's brilliant quality lens and also the 15 through to 35, which in my opinion is probably the best lens I've ever shot with. Listen, these lenses are not going to be cheap, but if you are looking to get access to the best lenses, then you can do that with the RP, the R, or the R5 and the R6. There are some issues that you face with this camera, and I said I'm going to mention in this video, so here it comes. First up, the battery. The battery is not very good, but hey folks, I mean, 
Mirrorless cameras in general are known for having pretty poor battery. You can get around about 250, 300 shots on a full charge, depending on how you use this camera, which is not great. And that does mean that you are going to have to get a few spare batteries. But good news for you guys is you can get third party batteries, which function, in my opinion, as good as Canon camera batteries themselves. And this is going to save you a lot of money. Also, there's no IBIS in this camera. Now, that may not be a big deal for a lot of people because Canon have not introduced IBIS in any of their cameras until the R6 and the R5. So it's no surprise to hear that, but from someone coming from that background and may have shot with IBIS, they might be surprised to know that they don't have it on this camera. But I will say you do get the RF glass and also EF lenses, which do have image stabilization built in. So it's not the end of the world and you can shoot at some low shutter speeds when you use the right lenses. Finally, probably the last flaw is it shoots only at five frames per second, which sounds low, doesn't it? If you check out these images here, I, take, I took some photos of my boy. He was running as fast as he could towards me and I just rattled off some images with the RP five frames per second and in high continuous mode. You can see for yourself, each one of these photos is sharp and in focus. So listen, this camera is not gonna be for people which are gonna be every day doing wildlife and sports photography. But if you're someone that just shoots, you know, fast moving subjects now and again, this camera is gonna have you covered and I wouldn't worry about that slow frames per second too much. At this point guys, I actually want to know if any of you watching the video are thinking about buying the RP. And if not the RP, what camera are you interested in? And why are you going to be why are you actually in the market, should I say, for this camera? Is it photography or is it for video? I'd love to know what you guys are thinking about and we can get into this after the video. Just leave a comment in the comment section and we can talk about it then. Let's jump into the video. When this camera was released, it had a really hard time with video and what I mean by that is the reviewers really trashed it and said that it's a terrible video camera which is not true if you are someone that shoots in 1080p this camera is great you can shoot in 24 30 and 60 frames per second so you can shoot cinematic 24 you can shoot in slow motion 60 frames per second and it's very reliable not to mention that the autofocus like I said earlier is brilliant and you get that with the video as well the other side of the story on this camera is the 4K. Now, I'm not gonna dress this up. The 4K on this camera is not the best. Let me tell you why. So first up, 4K, you can shoot 24, 30 frames per second, and um, you can shoot autofocus, you can shoot in manual mode, but really, you're never gonna wanna shoot this camera at 4K with its autofocus. You see, Canon added the dual pixel autofocus on into the 1080p mode and the RP. Brilliant, fantastic, it's reliable. But then they decided to add a contrast-based autofocus into the 4K mode. Now this spends most of its time hunting and uh, losing focus. So listen, no one's gonna wanna use a video camera when the autofocus is not working great. It's just a recipe for disaster. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, if you're looking for this camera um, to shoot 4K with, in autofocus mode then ju just just don't get it because it's not going to do a good job now if you are a manual video shooter you've got a bit of experience and you can shoot while in manual mode then it's a different story if you can get past the quite a large crop that you have in 4k mode then you can actually get some really nice 4k quality video it's not the best out there but it is good and of course you're controlling the autofocus yourself so you kind of move past that issue that you have in the autofocus mode. Another thing to think about with the RP when shooting video is that you don't get a flat profile so you can't shoot in Canon Log. Now you can shoot in neutral mode and you can create your own kind of flat profile um, from the user definition mode but I will say that it's not going to be nowhere near as good as Canon Log. So if you're someone that's looking at color grading your footage and getting you know, that nice flat profile with all that detail in, it's unfortunately gonna be another mm, for this camera. Okay guys, to sum this up, I'm gonna let you know what I think. The Canon US RP is a great camera for photography. Good sensor, great autofocus, take great pictures, and you've got access to the best lenses out there. 
For video, it's good for Full HD. You can shoot 1080p 24 through to 60 frames per second. It's great. But unfortunately, if you're looking at taking your video to the next level and shooting in 4K and grading your footage, this won't be the camera for you and you should look at some other options. I hope you've enjoyed this video today, guys. If you have, it would mean a lot if you give me a thumbs up and just let me know that you enjoyed it. Also, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe and the notification bell and whatever you do for the rest of the day, make sure it's a good one and I'll see you in the next video.